Hey gang, Scott here. I wanted to take the opportunity in this video to talk about the non-AI masks that are in On One Effects because they are still very useful. I know the AI masking tools get all the press and they're getting better you know, week over week, but there are still photos where your luminosity mask, your color range mask, are going to get the job done more quickly when you have a complex scene. And uh, this photo here really illustrates that. It's just one of the reasons also that I have on what effects in my photo toolkit. So I wanted to show you the before and after. So here's the before. I'd done some work on this photo in some other applications, brought it into effects to finish things up. And here's after. And a key thing was using the I say the term non-AI, meaning it's not recognizing objects or elements or people or things, but it's using the tones and colors of the image, which I guess is a, a simplistic form of AI. Nevertheless, they were the key to getting the, the finished look on the photo. Let's run through the filters and I'll show you how these particular types of masks really played an important role. So let's turn off all of these filters here so that we get back to the photo as it came in to effects. First thing, dynamic contrast. I'm looking at this photo. I want more punch on the hoodoos. And so that's what dynamic contrast is doing. But I don't want it anywhere else. How is that accomplished? Click on this mask here. You can see color range mask. And if I visualize that mask, you know, this would be well, I suppose doable with you know, some AI stuff. Uh, there's some improvements coming in Super Select AI where you can start to pick individual things. There'd be a lot of clicking, but in a photo like this, give me an orange tone, eyedropper, pick an orange tone, and then fine tune the range so you get exactly what you want, right? You know, fine tuning the range to be exactly where you want it to be. And then, of course, you know, once you get your mask in place, you know, I, I just use natural, the defaults here. I always like that look for dynamic contrast. Now with glow, I'm going to turn this one on. Pay attention to the snow. The snow gets a little brighter, a little, a little softer, a little airier. And you see there's kind of an increase even in, in the background, like the, the scene gets more three-dimensional. And so this glow is giving us that feel. And this is a softer touch on glow. But what about the mask? What's the mask? You're seeing it's still a color range mask? Well, it's the same mask I used for dynamic contrast, just inverted. Right? So simple copy mask, paste, invert. That sequence we use a lot in photography. I want to treat this element with one thing and then everything else with something else. And again, just using the glow and by virtue of using the color range mask here, it's really saying add a glow to everything that's not like orangey red. And in a photo like this, that's predominantly the snow. Uh, the the styling was just you know fiddling around with with the different uh, with the different choices. I probably chose something here in the in, in to begin with. Charge more normal. You can see the little asterisk next to it. That's the style that I chose. But then I backed off the opacity so it wasn't so strong. Uh, the last two things are just straight up filters. These are like finishing touches I almost always do on my photos. Color enhancer, there is no change to the color. Uh, if you haven't seen other videos I've done on this before, uh, the real nickel tour here, color enhancer does nothing to the photo out of the, the box. Low opacity with, let me get into the little thing here, blending, with a blending mode of overlay. And that ends like a contrast pop. It's, a, it's an older school trick we used to do with layers, where you'd take the photo and blend it with itself. Well, in effects, you can do that straight up with just a filter. I like the color enhancer for this because out of the box, it does nothing. It doesn't change the photo, and I can just play with the blending mode. And then finishing it off, you know, classic vignette. We'll turn the vignette, you know, off and on. You can see that. So, uh, you know, adding that up, I'll show you that before and after one more time. There's the unmodified from effects. There's the finished one. But those range masks for certain types of photos, those are the ones you want to reach for. Color range mask. Uh, I didn't use a luminosity mask on this one, but the same kind of principle applies. 
you got a lot of complex things going around in a landscape photo or, or any photo for that matter. The, the AI is great, except when it's not. <laughs> when you got photos that it's more work to coax something out of the AI and less work to use one of uh, our more traditional masking tools. So don't forget about those that you've got in there. Hope you found the video useful. Any questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.